This is section 11 of The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax, The Trimmer's Opinion of the Laws and Government, read by John Greenman. Our trimmer, as he hath a great veneration for laws in general, so he hath a more particular for our own. He looketh upon them as the chains that tie up our unruly passions, which else, like wild beasts let loose, would reduce the world into its first state of barbarism and hostility. The good things we enjoy we owe to them, and all the ill things we are freed from is by their protection. God himself thought it not enough to be a creator without being a lawgiver, and his goodness had been defective towards mankind in making them if he had not prescribed rules to make them happy to. All laws flow from that of nature, and where that is not the foundation they may be legally imposed, but they will be lamely obeyed by this nature is not meant that which fools and madmen misquote to justify their excesses it is innocent and uncorrupted nature that which disposeth men to choose virtue without its being prescribed and which is so far from inspiring ill thoughts into us that we take pains to suppress the good ones it infuseth the civilized world hath ever paid a willing subjection to laws even conquerors have done homage to them as the romans who took patterns of good laws even from those they had subdued and at the same time that they triumphed over an enslaved people the very laws of that place did not only remain safe but became victorious their new masters instead of suppressing them paid them more respect than they had from those who first made them, and by this wise method they arrived to such an admirable constitution of laws that to this day they reign by them. This excellency of them triumpheth still, and the world payeth now an acknowledgment of their obedience to that mighty empire, though so many ages after it is dissolved, and by a later instance the kings of france who in practice use their laws pretty familiarly yet think their picture is drawn with most advantage upon their seals when they are placed in the seat of justice and though the hieroglyphic is not there of so much use to the people as they would wish yet it showeth that no prince is so great as not to think fit for his own credit at least to give an outward when he refuseth a real worship to the laws. They are to mankind that which the sun is to plants, whilst it cherisheth and preserveth them. Where they have their force, and are not clouded or suppressed, every thing smileth and flourisheth. But where they are darkened, and not suffered to shine out, it maketh every thing to wither and decay they secure men not only against one another but against themselves too they are a sanctuary to which the crown hath occasion to resort as often as the people so that it is an interest as well as a duty to preserve them there would be no end of making a panegyric of laws let it be enough to add that without laws the world would become a wilderness and men little less than beasts but with all this the best things may come to be the worst if they are not in good hands and if it be true that the wisest men generally make the laws it is as true that the strongest do often interpret them and as rivers belong as much to the channel where they run as to the spring from whence they first rise so the laws depend as much upon the pipes through which they are to pass as upon the fountain from whence they flow. The authority of a king who is head of the law, as well as the dignity of public justice, is debased, 
when the clear stream of the law is puddled and disturbed by bunglers or conveyed by unclean instruments to the people our trimmer would have them appear in their full luster and would be grieved to see the day when instead of speaking with authority from the seats of justice they should speak out of a great with a lamenting voice like prisoners that desire to be rescued he wisheth that the bench may have a natural as well as a legal superiority to the bar he thinketh men's abilities very much misplaced when the reason of him that pleadeth is visibly too strong for those who judge and give sentence when those from the bar seem to dictate to their superiors upon the bench their furs will look scurvily about them and the respect of the world will leave the bare character of a judge to follow the essential knowledge of a lawyer who may be greater in himself than the other can be with all his trappings an uncontested superiority in any calling will have the better of any discountenance that authority can put upon it and therefore if ever such an unnatural method should be introduced it is then that westminster hall might be said to stand upon its head and though justice itself can never be so yet the administration of it would be rendered ridiculous a judge hath such power lodged in him that the king will never be thought to have chosen well where the voice of mankind hath not beforehand recommended the man to his station when men are made judges of what they do not understand the world censureth such a choice not out of ill-will to the men but fear to themselves if the king had the sole power of choosing physicians men would tremble to see bunglers preferred yet the necessity of taking physic from a doctor is generally not so great as that of receiving justice from a judge and yet the inferences will be very severe in such cases for either it will be thought that such men bought what they were not able to deserve or which is as bad that obedience shall be looked upon as a better qualification in a judge than skill or integrity when such sacred things as the laws are not only touched but guided by profane hands men will fear that out of the tree of the law from whence we expect shade and shelter such workmen will make cudgels to beat us with or rather they will turn to the cannon upon our properties that were entrusted with them for their defence to see the laws mangled disguised speak quite another language than their own to see them thrown from the dignity of protecting mankind to the disgraceful office of destroying them and notwithstanding their innocence in themselves to be made the worst instruments that the most refined villainy can make use of will raise men's anger above the power of laying it down again and tempt them to follow the evil examples given them of judging without hearing when so provoked by their desire of revenge our trimmer therefore as he thinketh the laws are jewels so he believeth that they are nowhere better set than in the constitution of our english government if rightly understood and carefully preserved it would be too great partiality to say they are perfect or liable to no objection such things are not of this world but if they have more excellencies and fewer faults than any other we know it is enough to recommend them to our esteem the dispute which is a greater beauty a monarchy or a commonwealth hath lasted long between their contending lovers and they have behaved themselves so like lovers who in good manners must be out of their wits who used such figures to exalt their own idols on either side and such angry aggravations to reproach one another in the contest that moderate men have in all times smiled upon this eagerness and thought it differed very little from a downright frenzy we in england by a happy use of the controversy conclude them both in the wrong 
and reject them from being our pattern not taking the words in the utmost extent which is monarchy a thing that leaveth men no liberty and a commonwealth such a one as alloweth them no quiet we think that a wise mean between these barbarous extremes is that which self-preservation ought to dictate to our wishes and we may say we have attained to this mean in a greater measure than any nation now in being or perhaps any we have read of though never so much celebrated for the wisdom or felicity of their constitutions we take from one the too great power of doing hurt and yet leave enough to govern and protect us we take from the other the confusion the parity the animosities and the license and yet reserve a due care of such a liberty as may consist with men's allegiance but it being hard if not impossible to be exactly even our government hath much the stronger bias towards monarchy which by the general consent and practice of mankind seemeth to have the advantage in dispute against a commonwealth the rules of a commonwealth are too hard for the bulk of mankind to come up to that form of government requireth such a spirit to carry it on as doth not dwell in great numbers but is restrained to so very few especially in this age that let the methods appear never so reasonable in paper they must fail in practice which will ever be suited more to men's nature as it is than as it should be monarchy is liked by the people for the bells and the tinsel the outward pomp and gilding and there must be milk for babes since the greatest part of mankind are and ever will be included in that list and it is approved by wise and thinking men all circumstances and objections impartially considered that it hath so great an advantage above all other forms when the administration of that power falleth in good hands that all other governments look out of countenance when they are set in competition with it lycurgus might have saved himself the trouble of making laws if either he had been immortal or that he could have secured to posterity a succeeding race of princes like himself his own example was a better law than he could with all his skill tell how to make such a prince is a living law that dictateth to his subjects whose thoughts in that case never rise above their obedience the confidence they have in the virtue and knowledge of the master preventing the scruples and apprehensions to which men are naturally inclined in relation to those that govern them such a magistrate is the life and soul of justice whereas the law is but a body and a dead one too without his influence to give it warmth and vigour and by the irresistible power of his virtue he doth so reconcile dominion and allegiance that all disputes between them are silenced and subdued and indeed no monarchy can be perfect and absolute without exception but where the prince is superior by his virtue as well as by his character and his power so that to screw out precedents of unlimited power is a plain diminution to a prince that nature hath made great and who had better make himself a glorious example to posterity than borrow an authority from dark records raised out of the grave which besides their non-usage have always in them matter of controversy and debate and it may be affirmed that the instances are very rare of princes having the worst in the dispute with their people if they were eminent for justice in time of peace or conduct in time of war such advantage the crown giveth to those who adorn it by their own personal virtues but since for the greater honour of good and wise princes and the better to set off their character by the comparison heaven hath decreed there must be a mixture and that such as are perverse or insufficient or perhaps both are at least to have their equal turns in the government of the world and besides that the will of man is so various and so unbounded a thing 
and so fatal too when joined with power misapplied it is no wonder if those who are to be governed are unwilling to have so dangerous as well as so uncertain a standard of their obedience there must be therefore rules and laws for want of which or at least the observation of them it was as capital for man to say that nero did not play well upon the lute as to commit treason or blaspheme the gods and even vespasian himself had like to have lost his life for sleeping whilst he should have attended and admired that empress impertinence upon the stage there is a wantonness in great power that men are generally too apt to be corrupted with and for that reason a wise prince to prevent the temptation arising from common frailty would choose to govern by rules for his own sake as well as for his people's since it only secureth him from errors and doth not lessen the real authority that a good magistrate would care to be possessed of for if the will of a prince is contrary either to reason itself or to the universal opinion of his subjects the law by a kind of restraint rescueth him from a disease that would undo him if his will on the other side is reasonable or well directed that will immediately becometh a law and he is arbitrary by an easy and natural consequence without taking pains or overturning the world for it if princes consider laws as things imposed on them they have the appearance of fetters of iron but to such as would make them their choice as well as their practice they are chains of gold and in that respect are ornaments as in others they are a defence to them and by a comparison not improper for god's vicegerents upon earth as our maker never commandeth our obedience to anything that as reasonable creatures we ought not to make our own election so a good and wise governor though all laws were abolished would by the voluntary direction of his own reason do without restraint the very same things that they would have enjoined our trimmer thinketh that the king and kingdom ought to be one creature not to be separated in their political capacity and when either of them undertake to act a part it is like the crawling of worms after they are cut in pieces which cannot be a lasting motion the whole creature not stirring at a time if the body have a dead palsy the head cannot make it move and god hath not yet delegated such a healing power to princes as that they can in a moment say to a languishing people oppressed and in despair take up your beds and walk the figure of a king is so comprehensive and exalted a thing that it is a kind of degrading him to lodge that power separately in his own natural person which can never be safely or naturally great but where the people are so united to him as to be flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone for when he is reduced to the single definition of a man he sinketh into so low a character that it is a temptation upon men's allegiance and an impairing that veneration which is necessary to preserve their duty to him whereas a prince who is so joined to his people that they seem to be his limbs rather than his subjects clothed with mercy and justice rightly applied in their several places his throne supported by love as well as by power and the warm wishes of his devoted subjects like never failing incense still ascending towards him looketh so like the best image we can frame to ourselves of god almighty that men would have much ado not to fall down and worship him and would be much more tempted to the sin of idolatry than to that of disobedience our trimmer is of opinion that there must be so much dignity inseparably annexed to the royal function as may be sufficient to secure it from insolence and contempt and there must be condescensions from the throne like kind showers from heaven that the prince may look so much the more like god almighty's deputy upon earth 
for power without love hath a terrifying aspect and the worship which is paid to it is like that which the indians give out of fear to wild beasts and devils he that feareth god only because there is an hell must wish there were no god and he who feareth the king only because he can punish must wish there were no king so that without a principle of love there can be no true allegiance and there must remain perpetual seeds of resistance against a power that is built upon such an unnatural foundation as that of fear and terror all force is a kind of foul play and whosoever aimeth at it himself doth by implication allow it to those he playeth with so that there will be ever matter prepared in the minds of people when they are provoked and the prince to secure himself must live in the midst of his own subjects as if he were in a conquered country raise arms as if he were immediately to meet or resist an invasion and all this while sleep as unquietly from the fear of the remedies as he did before from that of the disease it being hard for him to forget that more princes have been destroyed by their guards than by their people and that even at the time when the rule was quod principi placuit lex esto the armies and the praetorian bands which were the instruments of that unruly power were frequently the means made use of to destroy them who had it there will ever be this difference between god and his vicegerents that god is still above the instruments he useth and out of the danger of receiving hurt from them but princes can never lodge power in any hands which may not at some time turn it back upon them for though it is possible enough for a king to have power to satisfy his ambition yet no kingdom hath money enough to satisfy the avarice of under workmen who learn from that prince who will exact more than belongeth to him to expect from him much more than they deserve and growing angry upon the first disappointment they are the devils which grow terrible to the conjurers themselves who brought them up and can't send them down again and besides that there can be no lasting radical security but when the governed are satisfied with the governors it must be a dominion very unpleasant to a prince of an elevated mind to impose an abject and sordid servility instead of receiving the willing sacrifice of duty and obedience the bravest princes in all times who were uncapable of any other kind of fear have feared to grieve their own people such a fear is a glory and in this sense tis an infamy not to be a coward so that the mistaken heroes who are void of this generous kind of fear need no other aggravation to complete their ill characters when a despotic prince hath bruised all his subjects with a slavish obedience all the force he can use cannot subdue his own fears enemies of his own creation to which he can never be reconciled it being impossible to do injustice and not to fear revenge there is no cure for this fear but the not deserving to be hurt and therefore a prince who doth not allow his thoughts to stray beyond the rules of justice hath always the blessing of an inward quiet and assurance as a natural effect of his good meaning to his people and though he will not neglect due precautions to secure himself in all events yet he is uncapable of entertaining vain and remote suspicions of those of whom he resolveth never to deserve ill it is very hard for a prince to fear rebellion who neither doth nor intendeth to do anything to provoke it therefore too great a diligence in the governors to raise and improve dangers and fears from the people is no very good symptom and naturally begetteth an inference that they have thoughts of putting their subjects allegiance to a trial and therefore not without some reason fear beforehand that the irregularities they intend may raise men to a resistance 
our trimmer thinketh it no advantage to a government to endeavor the suppressing all kind of right which may remain in the body of the people or to employ small authors in it whose officiousness or want of money may encourage them to write though it is not very easy to have abilities equal to such a subject they forget that in their too high strained arguments for the rights of princes they very often plead against humane nature which will always give a bias to those reasons which seem of her side it is the people that readeth those books and it is the people that must judge of them and therefore no maxims should be laid down for the right of government to which there can be any reasonable objection for the world hath an interest and for that reason is more than ordinary discerning to find out the weak sides of such arguments as are intended to do them hurt and it is a diminution to a government to promote or countenance such well-affected mistakes which are turned upon it with disadvantage whenever they are detected and exposed and naturally the too earnest endeavors to take from men the right they have tempt them by the example to claim that which they have not in power as in most other things the way for princes to keep it is not to grasp more than their arms can well hold the nice and unnecessary inquiring into these things or the licensing some books and suppressing some others without sufficient reason to justify the doing either is so far from being an advantage to a government that it exposes it to the censure of being partial and to the suspicion of having some hidden designs to be carried on by these unusual methods when all is said there is a natural reason of state an undefinable thing grounded upon the common good of mankind which is immortal and in all changes and revolutions still preserveth its original right of saving a nation when the letter of the law perhaps would destroy it and by whatsoever means it moveth carrieth a power with it that admitteth of no opposition being supported by nature which inspireth an immediate consent at some critical times into every individual member to that which visibly tendeth to preservation of the whole and this being so a wise prince instead of controverting the right of this reason of state will by all means endeavor it may be of his side and then he will be secure our trimmer cannot conceive that the power of any prince can be lasting but where tis built upon the foundation of his own unborrowed virtue he must not only be the first mover and the fountain from whence the great acts of state originally flow but he must be thought so to his people that they may preserve their veneration for him he must be jealous of his power and not impart so much of it to any about him as that he may suffer an eclipse by it he cannot take too much care to keep himself up for when a prince is thought to be led by those with whom he should onely advise and that the commands he giveth are transmitted through him and are not of his own growth the world will look upon him as a bird adorned with feathers that are not his own or consider him rather as an engine than a living creature besides twould be a contradiction for a prince to fear a commonwealth and at the same time create one himself by delegating such a power to any number of men near him as is inconsistent with the figure of a monarch it is the worst kind of coordination the crown can submit to for it is the exercise of power that draweth the respect along with it and when that is parted with the bare character of a king is not sufficient to keep it up but though it is a diminution to a prince to parcel out so literally his power amongst his favorites it is worse to divide with any other man and to bring himself in competition with a single rival a partner in government is so unnatural a thing 
that it is a squinty-eyed allegiance that must be paid to such a double-bottom monarchy the two czars of muscovy are an example that the more civilized part of the world will not be prone to follow whatsoever gloss may be put upon this method by those to whom it may be of some use the prince will do well to remember and reflect upon the story of certain men who had set up a statue in honor of the sun yet in a very little time they turned their backs to the sun and their faces to the statue these mystical unions are better placed in the other world than they are in this and we shall have much ado to find that in a monarch god's vicegerency is delegated to more heads than that which is anointed princes may lend some of their light to make another shine but they must still preserve the superiority of being the brighter planet and when it happeneth that the reversion is in men's eyes there is more care necessary to keep up the dignity of possessions that men may not forget who is king either out of their hopes or fears who shall be if the sun should part with all his light to any of the stars the indians would not know where to find their god after he had so deposed himself and would make the light wherever it went the object of their worship all usurpation is alike upon sovereignty it is no matter from what hand it cometh and crowned heads are to be more circumspect in respect men's thoughts are naturally apt to ramble beyond what is present they love to work at a distance and in their greedy expectations which their minds may be filled with of a new master the old one may be left to look a little out of countenance our trimmer owneth a passion for liberty yet so restrained that it doth not in the least impair or taint his allegiance he thinketh it hard for a soul that doth not love liberty ever to raise itself to another world he taketh it to be the foundation of all virtue and the only seasoning that giveth a relish to life and though the laziness of a slavish subjection hath its charms for the more gross and earthly part of mankind yet to men made of a better sort of clay all that the world can give without liberty hath no taste it is true nothing is sold so cheap by unthinking men but that doth no more lessen the real value of it than a country fellow's ignorance doth that of a diamond in selling it for a pot of ale liberty is the mistress of mankind she hath powerful charms which do so dazzle us that we find beauties in her which perhaps are not there as we do in other mistresses yet if she was not a beauty the world would not run mad for her therefore since the reasonable desire of it ought not to be restrained and that even the unreasonable desire of it cannot be entirely suppressed those who would take it away from a people possessed of it are likely to fail in the attempting or be very unquiet in the keeping of it our trimmer admireth our blessed constitution in which dominion and liberty are so well reconciled it giveth to the prince the glorious power of commanding freemen and to the subject the satisfaction of seeing the power so lodged as that their liberties are secure it doth not allow the crown such a ruining power as that no grass can grow where e'er it treadeth but a cherishing and protecting power such a one as hath a grim aspect only to the offending subjects but is the joy and the pride of all the good ones their own interest being so bound up in it as to engage them to defend and support it and though in some instances the king is restrained yet nothing in the government can move without him our laws make a distinction between vassalage and obedience between a devouring prerogative and a licentious ungovernable freedom and as of all the orders of building 
the composite is the best so ours by a happy mixture and a wise choice of what is best in others is brought into a form that is our felicity who live under it and the envy of our neighbor that cannot imitate it the crown hath power sufficient to protect our liberties the people have so much liberty as is necessary to make them useful to the crown our government is in a just proportion no tyranny no unnatural swelling either of power or liberty and whereas in all overgrown monarchies reason learning and inquiry are hanged in effigy for mutineers here they are encouraged and cherished as the surest friends to a government established upon the foundation of law and justice when all is done those who look for perfection in this world may look as the jews have for their messiahs and therefore our trimmer is not so unreasonably partial as to free our government from all objections no doubt there have been fatal instances of its sickness and more than that of its mortality for some time though by a miracle it hath been revived again but till we have another race of mankind in all constitutions that are bounded there will ever be some matter of strife and contention and rather than want pretensions men's passions and interests will raise them from the most inconsiderable causes our government is like our climate there are winds which are sometimes loud and unquiet and yet with all the trouble they give us we owe great part of our health unto them they clear the air which else would be like a standing pool and instead of refreshment would be a disease unto us there may be fresh gales of asserting liberty without turning into such storms of hurricane as that the state should run any hazard of being cast away by them these strugglings which are natural to all mixed governments while they are kept from growing into convulsions do by a mutual agitation from the several parts rather support and strengthen than weaken or maim the constitution and the whole frame instead of being torn or disjointed cometh to be the better and closer knit by being thus exercised but whatever faults our government may have or a discerning critic may find in it when he looketh upon it alone let any other be set against it and then it showeth its comparative beauty let us look upon the most glittering outside of unbounded authority and upon a nearer inquiry we shall find nothing but poor and miserable deformity within let us imagine a prince living in his kingdom as if in a great galley his subjects tugging at the oar laden with chains and reduced to real rags that they may gain him imaginary laurels let us represent him gazing among his flatterers and receiving their false worship like a child never contradicted and therefore always cousined or like a lady complimented only to be abused condemned never to hear truth and consequently never to do justice wallowing in the soft bed of wanton and unbridled greatness not less odious to the instruments themselves than to the objects of his tyranny blown up into an ambitious dropsy never to be satisfied by the conquest of other people or by the oppression of his own by aiming to be more than a man he falleth lower than the meanest of them a mistaken creature swelled with panegyrics and flattered out of his senses and not only an encumbrance but a nuisance to mankind a hardened and unrelenting soul and like some creatures that grow fat with poisons he groweth great by other men's miseries an ambitious ape of the divine greatness an unruly giant that would storm even heaven itself but that his scaling ladders are not long enough in short a wild and devouring creature in rich trappings and with all his pride no more than a whip in god's almighty hand 
to be thrown into the fire when the world hath been sufficiently scourged with it this picture laid in right colors would not invite men to wish for such a government but rather to acknowledge the happiness of our own under which we enjoy all the privilege reasonable men can desire and avoid all the miseries many others are subject to so that our trimmer would keep it with all its faults and doth as little forgive those who give the occasion of breaking it as he doth those that take it our trimmer is a friend to parliaments notwithstanding all their faults and excesses which of late have given such matter of objection to them he thinketh that though they may at some times be troublesome to authority yet they add the greatest strength to it under a wise administration he believeth no government is perfect except a kind of omnipotence reside in it to exercise upon great occasions now this cannot be obtained by force alone upon people let it be never so great there must be their consent too or else a nation moveth only by being driven a sluggish and constrained motion void of that life and vigor which is necessary to produce great things whereas the virtual consent of the whole being included in their representatives and the king giving the sanction to the united sense of the people every act done by such an authority seemeth to be an effect of their choice as well as a part of their duty and they do with an eagerness of which men are incapable whilst under a force execute whatsoever is so enjoined as their own wills better explained by parliament rather than from the terror of incurring the penalty of the law for omitting it and by means of this political omnipotence whatever sap or juice there is in a nation may be to the last drop produced whilst it riseth naturally from the root whereas all power exercised without consent is like the giving wounds and gashes and tapping a tree at unseasonable times for the present occasion which in a very little time must needs destroy it our trimmer believeth that by the advantage of our situation there can hardly any such sudden disease come upon us but that the king may have time enough left to consult with his physicians in parliament pretence indeed may be made but a real necessity so pressing that no delay is to be admitted is hardly to be imagined and it will be neither easy to give an instance of any such thing for the time past or reasonable to presume it will ever happen for the time to come but if that strange thing should fall out our trimmer is not so straight-laced as to let a nation die or to be stifled rather than it should be helped by any but the proper officers the cases themselves will bring the remedies along with them and he is not afraid to allow that in order to its preservation there is a hidden power in government which would be lost if it was defined a certain mystery by virtue of which a nation may at some critical times be secured from ruin but then it must be kept as a mystery it is rendered useless when touched by unskilful hands and no government ever had or deserved to have that power which was so unwary as to anticipate their claim to it our trimmer cannot help thinking it had been better if the triennial act had been observed because tis the law and we would not have the crown by such an example teach the nation to break it all irregularity is catching it hath a contagion in it especially in an age so much more inclined to follow ill patterns than good ones he would have had a parliament because tis an essential part of the constitution even without the law it being the only provision in extraordinary cases in which there would be otherwise no remedy and there can be no greater solecism in government than a failure of justice he would have had one because nothing else can unite and heal us all other means are mere shifts and projects houses of cards to be blown down with the least breath and cannot resist the difficulties which are even presumed in things of this kind 
and he would have had one because it might have done the king good and could not possibly have done him hurt without his consent which in that case is not to be supposed and therefore for him to fear it is so strange and so little to be comprehended that the reasons can never be presumed to grow in our soil or to thrive in it when transplanted from any other country and no doubt there are such irresistible arguments for calling a parliament that though it might be denied to the unmannerly mutinous petitions of men that are malicious and disaffected it will be granted to the soft and obsequious murmurs of his majesty's best subjects and there will be such rhetoric in their silent grief that it will at last prevail against the artifices of those who either out of guilt or interest are afraid to throw themselves upon their country knowing how scurvily they have used it that day of judgment will come though we know neither the day nor the hour and our trimmer would live so as to be prepared for it with full assurance in the meantime that the lamenting voice of a nation cannot long be resisted and that a prince who could so easily forgive his people when they had been in the wrong cannot fail to hear them when they are in the right end of the trimmer's opinion of the laws and government read by john greenman